Weddings are protracted events and once the ceremony is over, guests start working up an appetite. By the time the reception has started, some are ravenous. And nowadays, people expect more than an old school buffet, which sometimes tastes as if it were prepared by an old boarding school cook. Fortunately, Yudhika has some divine ideas for sweet wedding party treats, which she's about to share with us. A wedding wouldn't be a celebration without a few must-have sweet treats. In the kitchen today, I'll be showing you how to make some favourites. There's banana puri, coconut and almond poli, and a saffron and coconut soji. I'm starting out with the banana puri and I've made the dough already. There's no mystery when it comes to making up the dough. It's a really simple recipe. Rub butter into the flour. You've got the baking powder, salt in there as well. Add iced water and lemon juice just a touch of lemon juice to make up a soft dough. You leave that to rest for a few hours, divide into portions, you're going to need eight balls of dough. To start out with, we're going to roll this and it's softened quite beautifully. Flatten that slightly, sprinkle a bit of flour onto the work surface, press that down and start to roll. What you're aiming for is to roll the dough into a square or a rectangle, whichever you're most comfortable with. You don't want it too thin as it might break later on. Now flour the work surface and place that on top. Use a bit of melted butter, use a soft brush for this, it does work best. We've got a touch of corn flour here. Just dust that over. Fingertips are the best tool for this job. And I'm going to alternate pink and white layers. I've used a touch of cardamom powder in this. Traditionally, crushed coriander seeds are used, but it does tend to tear the dough. A little more. And over this layer, now we're going to brush with butter again. Brushing from the top to the bottom. It's almost like painting the butter onto the dough. That should do it. All the way to the edges. A little more corn flour going on top and we're going to sandwich the two buttered sides together, lay it over. You can just adjust the dough to ensure that the layers cover each other properly. We're going to repeat this step until all layers are done. And that's the last layer. Just press it down slightly. Now roll lightly to remove any air bubbles. Use a sharp knife and cut through. And then the other edge as well. We just want them to all be even. Bottom and top now. It's important to be as neat as you can be when you're working with this, so you get even layers. And if you look here, you can see those pink and white layers. The next step, a little bit of cold water going around the edges of the dough, just to make a sticky edge. And the reason I do this is so that the pastry doesn't open in the oil when it's being fried. Brushing the top now with melted butter and I'm taking care not to go over the edge that's got water on and corn flour now going on top and that is done. The next step is to tightly roll this into a Swiss roll. As you can see, there are no breaks in the dough. It looks like a coconut pinwheel. Now gently slice through, let's say about a centimetre and a half thick. That's the last one that I'm slicing through. I'm going to flatten these slightly using my palm. And this is the edge that you need to be concerned about. Press that down all the way, fold it over, flour the work surface and roll that out. And we're ready to fry. To test the oil, I'm going to use some of this off-cut dough and Pop that into the oil. You can see this off-cut dough really starts to open up in the oil as well. And the first banana puri now going into the hot oil. If you're feeling brave, you can fry a few at a time. This is my first one into the pan. I think I'm going to just try one. It does puff up and rise to the surface. Resist the urge to play around with the layers in that pastry. They're so delicate and they are going to break. The next one going in. The trick when you're frying these is to always make sure the bottom layer is set before you turn it over so it doesn't open in the oil. I feel quite ecstatic. These look perfect. The first one's ready. This one's also ready. Two more going into the hot oil. I'm feeling quite confident. I'm going to add another one to the oil. 
Some people say they look like banana flowers. Some say they look like roses. Whatever they look like, they are absolutely delicious and a treat. Let's get these out the oil. Time for a quick tidy up, and then we're going to get started on the coconut and almond poorly. The first thing we're going to do is to heat up the pan. First ingredient going into the pan, the flaked almonds. Spread that over the pan and toast them lightly. Poorly is a favorite at Hindu weddings. They're often packed in large pots and sent to the bride in her new home. To this, add the sesame seeds. I can hear them hiss and sizzle in the pan. In goes the coconut. I'm going to lower the heat and toast that gently. It should take about two to three minutes to toast. The coconut's now ready. Switch off the heat. To this, add the ground cardamom. The pan's still quite warm. The coconut and almonds are beautifully toasted. Scoop that into a bowl and leave it to cool slightly. To this, add condensed milk. Almost looks a bit like white chocolate going in. And then dessert cream. Desiccated coconut can be quite dry. The dessert cream adds not just a creamy texture, but also moisture to the coconut. And the filling is ready. I've made the dough already. It's made using butter and flour. You rub the butter into the flour, add a touch of salt and iced water to make a soft dough. These are 25 gram portions of dough. For this, you're just going to flatten them out. Use a touch of flour on the work surface and roll that out. That should do it. You don't want this to be too thin. Repeat this with the remaining portions of dough. And when I roll them out, I press down slightly harder on the one side. That gets the dough to move around. And that's the last one. Let's heat up the oil. Now to fill these pastries, place a round of dough into the pastry press and flour that first so it doesn't stick. And press down. Use a touch of water. Crimping these pastries can be quite time consuming. Scoop a bit of that coconut filling and press that together. Pinch off the excess dough and open. That's our first poorly done. The oil's hot and we're ready to fry. Sizzles as it hits the pan. And the next one, a few more. I think the crispier they are, the better they taste. The pastry has turned pale golden around the edges, and if you tap them lightly with a spatula or a spoon, you'll hear that they are quite crisp, which means they are ready. Place them on a wire rack. Tip when you're frying anything is never place it on paper towel. The paper towel absorbs the moisture and starts to steam through, and that makes them turn soggy. Rather on a wire rack, and even if you're serving them, you don't need a doily or absorbent paper towel. Just pop them straight onto a plate, and that will work beautifully. Move the poorly aside. I'm going to start with the soji now. Start out by heating the pan. Going into the pan, we've got semolina and a cinnamon stick. Stir that around. It's not always easy to see the color of the semolina change. You might forget the color it started out as. I suggest using the back of your finger and touch the semolina. It should be really hot. To this, add the butter. I love hearing the sizzle in the pan. Also the aroma of melted butter in a hot pan. It starts to foam up and looks like honey-colored liquid in the pan. To this, add the coconut milk, add water, add the dessert cream, evaporated milk, cardamom, and the saffron strands. Work those ingredients together and break down the lumps in the semolina. To tint this now, use a touch of egg yellow food coloring. It comes together quite nicely, almost in a ball. The moisture's evaporated, Ready now for the sweetening agents, condensed milk and sugar. The sugar melts and liquefies a bit. You'll need to cook that down for a minute or two longer. I'm going to stir some of these almonds into the soji. Just for a pop of color, reserve some for garnishing. These are tinted bright red and they do look quite festive. Perfect for a wedding celebration. And that's our soji done. And I'm going to lay out my sweet treats. Everything looks fantastic. Put a bit of added decadence. I've got dessert cream going onto the soji. Swirl that over. 
more almonds now. To top that, you can use sugar syrup to drizzle over the banana puri. I'm going to dust these with icing sugar. Just a light dusting, we don't want these to be too sweet. That should do it. Some golden almonds now going on top. Just to add a bit of wedding cheer to these. That's ready. These treats will definitely make any wedding celebration a more joyous one, bringing good cheer and happiness. We've prepared a coconut and almond poorly. We've also made a coconut and saffron soji, which would be perfect after a delicious biryani. And then we've made these delicious light crisp banana puris. Making Indian confectionaries has much in common with a good marriage. It takes lots of dedication and hard work. It is worth the reward.